mighty name of Jesus. Elohim Adonai, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, may your word sit in our hearts. May you renew your covenants in us through Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Tell your neighbor, my God is faithful. I can't hear you. Tell him once again, my God is faithful. Ask him which God. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Elohim Adonai is a faithful God. I assure you. And today, he reminds each and every one of us that his faithfulness will continue to unfold in your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you have any doubt that God is faithful in your life? If you are having any doubt that God is not yet faithful, maybe because of the situation you are going through, I want you to personalize the word of God today because the word of God was sent and as Nathan took it to David the Bible says he said to Nathan go and tell my servant David so if you are not yet convinced that God is faithful the word of God is sent to you Remove that, my servant David, and place your name there. Praise the Lord. God is a faithful God. And one of those that saw the faithfulness of God is David. And he's one of the Bible personalities that many people admire. I also admire him. And why most of us admire him is because of the love of God that filled his life. Praise the Lord. Don't think that David was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. No. If you know how David was born, in fact, we are told that even the, 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 the father and the mother has already concluded that no more sons. But somehow, the mother of David played a trick. By the time the husband will notice that eventually that David that he was played a trick on, they will begin to maltreat David. And that was why they were sending him to go and uh, shepherd the animals. So in the morning, David, even his brothers, they were not happy with him because he, he's not, he came when nobody was even praying for him to come. The father was angry with him. The brothers were angry with him. But on the day, God will show his faithfulness in the life and in the family of Jesse, it fell on David. Why many people also admire him and love him and want that kind of blessing in their life is also because David is a man of grateful hearts towards God. He knew where God took him from. 
and he knew the mighty works, the miracles that God and wonders that God did in his life to raise him from there and place him on a throne. Many people admire him because of his spirit of prayer. He will always find time to sit in the presence of God and pray to his God according to whatever situation in his life. That is why we have the book of Psalms. And when you go to the book of Psalms, you will see the situations that David went through. Praise the Lord. And why I like him more is because of his thoughts towards God. What he thinks in his heart about God. And today we are told that one of those days, you know, he was pondering and meditating. Looking at what God has done in his life, he thought to himself, I am now placed in a very beautiful house, a mansion. And then you remember that the Ark of Covenant is still in the tent. Look at the thoughts he was having. He was having a special thought for God. What can I do to this my faithful God? And we are told, he beckoned Nathan and told him, this is what, I have special thoughts for God. I want to do something for him. And Nathan told him, go ahead. And because God is all seeing God, a faithful God, has seen already what meditations of the heart of Jesus, David was, he did not waste time to go to Nathan in the night and say, go and tell, go and tell my servant David. Because of those special thoughts, God decided to release many more covenant blessings in his life. I don't know what thoughts you had this morning before coming from us. Praise the Lord. I don't know the kind of love that was in your heart even before you came here. But for David, seeing what God has done in his life, he he, he, he thought of something special. I don't know if you have thought about something special that nobody has ever done that you want to do for your faithful God. And by the time God sent Nathan to David, we are told In verse, in chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 4. But that very night, the Lord's words came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. When you meditates special thoughts, special love for God. God also meditates special love, special message, and special blessing for you. Are you able to build a house for me to live in? I have not dwelt in a house since I brought you, since I brought the Israelites up from Egypt to the present day. But I have been moving about in a tent for shelter. As long as I walked with the Israelites, did I say anything to the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people? Did I say, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Nobody has ever thought of that. And in verse 8, we are told, For that special thought, God said to him, Now, you will tell my servant David, This is what the Lord of hosts says. I took you from the pasture, from the tending of the sheep, 
to make you commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, cutting down all your enemies before you. Now I will make your name great, as the name of the great ones on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel and plant them that they may live there in peace. Praise the Lord. While David was meditating specially for what he wants to do to honor God, God released new blessings. He gave him the blessing of peace. Peace. David fought all his life. But we are told that at a time God rested, made him rest from fighting because he gave him victory over all the neighboring countries. He cut all his enemies. Praise the Lord. And that is how faithful God is. When you have a love for him in your heart god looks at what he will do to give you peace i will provide a place for my people israel and plant them that they may live in peace they shall not be harassed nor shall be shall the wicked men oppress them as before Some of us go through one trouble after another. You just finish this novena and you're overcoming that another one. God will give you rest for more troubles, from all sides, from every harassment of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus, He is a faithful God. As if that was not enough, he told him he will establish his children. When time comes for you to rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your son after you, the one born of you, and I will make him reign secure. He shall build a house for my name, and I will firmly establish his kingship forever. Some of us are, are troubling our lives with what our children will become. When they reach 18, you are wondering now, what is next thing? When they finish, when they graduate, have you thought of what kind of covenant blessing? Have you even come into the presence of God and, and, and present them and said, you are a covenant-keeping God. Therefore, establish this covenant you have done in my life, in the life of my children. Some of us pray that our children will never pass us. Do you know some people pray like that? Many people, some. Imagine that kind of prayer. And if you hear your father or your mother praying that, tell him, I rebook you. And when such kind of parents do that, they make sure that their, all the efforts of their children amounts to nothing. They want to remain great. Present your children to a faithful God and tell him, you have seen me true. See also my children true. Praise the Lord. That is a covenant keeping God and he will do that. And that is what we are enjoying today, even as we wait for Christmas. is the covenant that God established in the life of David over his children. That posterity is what Christ is fulfilling as the son of David. And look at the special love that he has for him. He said, even your children, I will be a father to them. They will be my firstborn sons. If God says this over your children, you will go to sleep now. 
Because you know that the hand of the Lord will fulfill it. It's not as if your children may not fall astray or not, but God's hands will always... He even said to David that even when they sin, even when they do something wrong, I will punish them as men do, but my faithfulness will last. I will never withdraw my love for them. And that is the kind of faithful God we have. A God who has given us his fatherly love in the Annunciation. In the Gospel we are told that when the angel came to bring that good news, the good news that he renewed in the life of David, it came at a time when the Persian king took over. It came a time when the king of Assyria, even the Romans, at that time, the dynasty of David was cut short. But because of the everlasting covenant of God, it got renewed in the life of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I don't know what covenant God has with your family. In the days of our four forefathers, they make sure, those of them who, who, who were religious, but not, of course, it was not the fault of their, uh, uh, the, their own fault. They knew a God, not the God of, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, they knew other gods, but they will always make sure. Remember, they will go and say, keep my children, my children's children, Whatever you have done to me, do to them. That this love you have shown me will endure. How many times do we do that now, in our own time, that we that are worshipping the true and living God? God has given us his blessing in Christ Jesus. And in the second reading, St. Paul says, The mystery which has which was kept secret for long ages is now disclosed. And that is the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to renew his covenant of love in your life. And once you accept that, it will overflow even in your children's children. And that is our prayer today. We do not want any power of darkness to cut short the faithfulness of God. He's a faithful God. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant of loving devotion for a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. That is our God. Psalm 89. In Psalm 89, again, David begins to, to recall these blessings he, he encountered in God. I will sing forever, O Lord, of your Lord, and proclaim your faithfulness from age to age. I will declare that your love endures forever, that your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. May his covenant endure in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that when Nathan came to David and uh, revealed these blessings in his life, what God will do for him and for his children. In verse 18, the Bible says, King David went, sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord, and what is my family? Not just him alone, with his family. Who am I, Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me thus far? Yet, this 
was not enough for you, O Lord God, for you have also made promises to your servant's house for a long time to come. What more can I say, O Lord God? What more can David say to you? You know your servant, O Lord God. You will fulfill your promise and carry out your plan as you do now in bringing about all these great things and revealing them to your servant. Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you, nor is there a God other than you, as we ourselves have heard. Is there on earth another nation like your people Israel, whom God has come to redeem and make his people? Indeed, you made your name famous by performing great and awesome deeds and rescuing them out of Egypt from their people and their gods. And that is what, this is the kind of song that we, we should have as we approach Christmas. Knowing that God will become flesh and dwell among us and to redeem us from the power of sin, you need to sing a new song to your God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. May God continue to be a faithful God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus.